of mass action protests by the Raila-led Azimio coalition. This being the second week triggering a debate on the contest between democratic ideals and the economy, civil liberties and civic duties. And that's why tonight we'll be delving into the topic of protests, rights and duties. And joining us in studio is, I've got three guests here with me. I've got governance analyst, Professor Alfred Omenya. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Aya. Um, the next guest, I knew her by a different title, but I will now call her a good governance and accountability advocate, okay. Wenziro Gikonyo. Welcome to the program as well. Pleasure to be here. And uh, Danvas Makori, who's a commissioner with the NCIC, welcome to the program as well. Thanks, Aya. Yes. Thanks for having me. And Danvas, I actually want to start with you because I know the NCIC has monitoring mechanisms across the country. Yes. This evening, we are hearing disturbing reports from Kibra. I don't know if you've gotten any accurate information on what's happening there. And of course, many Kenyans are asking for interventions on the same note. Uh, it's sad and very disturbing, actually. It it, the skirmishes started uh, during most part of the day, uh, back and forth between two groups, and escalated late in the evening. Um, and I know I can confirm right now, uh, one mosque was set on fire, and then back and forth, the church was set on fire. There's a lot of activity right now happening and now things are getting out of hand. Um, we have monitors on the ground, and actually, even as we were waiting to come back on air, I'm still getting reports, and as we speak, um, it has gone beyond even just what, we, what, we, what you can see reported. And I can tell you even houses, there's an, there's an NHC housing near there. Um, I, I'm, I'm being told um, it's the, the gates right now are actually being overpowered and then people storming in and, and, and looting. So Kibra is, is very concerning. I truly hope law enforcement uh, can respond um, quickly as possible because if nothing is done tonight, I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow morning. It gets worse. I mean, we know the history of Kibra. It doesn't get any better for, from now, unless something is, we have to nip it in the bud now, not, not tomorrow morning, now. Let me give you another minute to then speak now as the National Cohesion Integration Commission. Yeah. Again, and I asked you this same question last week, a, a day like today. What we saw today was, was, not, cohes was, was not cohesive in, every, in any way. There was no integration Actually, in some of the activities. What's yeah, your reading of that? Yes, yes, well, you got, uh, thanks. You see, uh, I th I th this is a sad day for our country, a very sad day. And as a country, I think we've forgotten our past. And it's say those who forget history or don't learn from history repeat the same mistakes. And, and we are seeing the same playbook. I mean, we've seen it, and, and I truly hope we can sober up just a little bit, because uh, when, when people speak or act in anger or emotion, you're bound to make mistake. And I really want us as a country to be sober up a little bit, because today if we don't uh, bring our country back from the brink. Tonight actually is almost a defining night, and, and today actually, because what we've seen is, is, is unprecedented to an extent, but also is a playbook that we've seen in the past uh, play, uh, um, uh, come play. Now, last Monday, because that's what we were talking about when you asked me, um, there are people on one side who were cheering, saying how you know they've brought a whole country or a city to a standstill, okay? And then they're very happy about that. And today, there's a group also who's very happy seeing what's happened on, in, in the Northlands and, and the spectrum. So there's, there's, you can see those groups really cheering, but we're cheering anarchy and lawlessness and, and cannibal, like, cannibalizing ourselves. And it starts like that. Why I'm saying that is because it starts like that for history of our country. Uh, how do you think the Northern Kenya had gotten where it was today? It's because the lawlessness was planted six years ago and something happened, and tit for tat, as we speak, as if you follow social media to right now, uh, individuals' property is being listed. Well, they have this, and that tit for tat is gonna go and get out of hand. Kibra is getting out of hand today as we speak. Why? It's because it's like somebody has opened the gates of hell in, in, in trying to, re, uh, to, to win a battle today, but we were losing the war as a country. Okay. Yeah, so my, my thing is just we, we need to actually sober up now. I think things are really getting out of hand and, and, and our emotions, we need to be sober up because if we don't pull our country tonight out of the brink, uh, Thursday is going to get even worse now because not, not, this is not a protest anymore. This is, these are the seeds of, of, of civil unrest and, and the civil, civil, uh, uh, civil war. This is how it starts actually. I call for sobriety on your part. Uh, Wanjiro, as you compare and contrast what you saw today with what you saw last week, is the cause of, of Azimio still, is it clear to you? Is this the best approach? And when you look at the response by the police on the other end, was it within the law? Was it warranted? What's your take? Well, as always, um, our situation is uh, complex. 
it is not that straightforward because Azimio's charge is one primarily around the elections. Of course, they're talking about cost of living, but the call started around them saying that whereas they recognize the Supreme Court ruling, they didn't accept that ruling. They said that despite the verdict, there are still questions that were not answered around the technology used and that there was po a po uh, that the election result did not reflect the reality on the ground. Now this mirrors back to uh, 207 because that was the same charge even though then the issues, I think maybe the electoral malpractices were a lot more evident. Mm. If uh, um, as is charged, this, these, the election was manipulated, that the, the results were manipulated because there's a big black hole between the transmission process and the results coming out. There are many questions that weren't answered. The servers hadn't been op haven't been opened. If indeed that's the, the case, then what would the course of action be? Because it's our democracy um, really um, being tested. We've then seen, of course, uh, the regime that's come in. There's been a calling of people to state house, um, opposition people being entertained in state house, and this sense that the president is building alliances and, you know, undermining the, the, the opposition instead of engaging the opposition in a structured manner to say, look, you are contesting the results. Mm. Uh, let us sit down and discuss. You're uh, contesting the withdrawal or suspension of the subsidies. Let us sit down and discuss the economic crisis facing the country. Instead of doing that, he's really been playing a lot of politics and, uh, you know, this sense that people appear to be being bought off. So the question then becomes comes, what are the avenues available? Raila Odinga um, has a history of, he, he's very strong in um, mobilizing the public. Uh, mass mobilization is one of his singular strengths and has been all through. Raila Odinga also, remember, has been a key um, you know, personality and a key contributor to Kenya's uh, democratic process through the opposition politics and all of that. So. On one hand, there are genuine grievances, but then we also have a reality of polit politics, state-sponsored violence, politically-sponsored violence. So we could ask, who was instigating in Kibra that you know, started this standoff between the Nubians and, 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 and uh, you know, what, to start, start this conflict off. We've seen that violence tends to have political interests behind it. How did we have people, um, you know, breaking into the Northlands? Who, who put them there? Who, how did they, you know, in a state where we've got quite a lot of policing and security, how did people manage to get into, into that if it wasn't state-sponsored? So there are questions to be asked, but at the end of the day, we need to be aware that this country is very fragile, our democracy is fragile, our nationhood and our statehood is very fragile, and we need these two principles, uh, well, the opposition, and we need um, uh, William Ruto to really stem this right now, otherwise we, it, it could get out of hand. Uh, Prof, just picking up from where she left off, uh, the Azimio demands on one hand about what they, they want to see before they call off the protest. But this evening, no one's really talking about that. This evening, the conversation online in people's homes is the home of a, the, the property of a former president was invaded. Uh, the business of, of a, you know, opposition leader saw some sort of attacks as well. And, you know, properties of leaders are being listed on social media as, you know, if, if you carry on like this, we could also go this way. And leaders on both sides were treading on a dangerous territory. Yeah, definitely. And, and, um, uh, Waiga, it is, is unfortunate that uh, we can actually attribute uh, this mobilization to politicians who should know better and, and to leaders uh, you know, uh, in the country who should know better, having seen uh, the 2008. Uh, but, but of course, it's not surprising because uh, um, this mobilization had started during campaigns and, and it was very unfortunate. Um, uh, we, on one hand, we're saying that uh, we're no longer d discussing uh, or mobilizing along ethnic lines, that now we're mobilizing along uh, e economic, other, other issues. But basically what it was, was, was more or less, uh, you know, coming in and, and knowing that uh, the poor are very many. 
So you actually set them up against the other classes. And um, the Hustler dynasty uh, conversation that I was very, very un uncomfortable with and I remain very uncomfortable with uh, to date, um, you know, uh, came from there. And I actually witnessed people being attacked just because of the cars they were driving um, and so on. And I think um, um, I, fr from where I was, uh, uh, from where I stand and, uh, and looking at, uh, you know, what was happening around, you start seeing the patterns. You, you actually start seeing uh, um, something that started off as an, an economic thing, but uh, you start seeing uh, ethnic undertones, but more worrying, you start seeing class undertones, you know, uh, where you're saying, oh, those people stole from us, you know, uh, we can settle people in your, in your land. Um, uh, you know, so that uh, it's not just the poor people who get affected, but but but, but also the rich and so on. Um, yeah, but but I think um, uh, more fundamentally, uh, I want to just share a personal um, experience. Um, and this relates to Mungiki, uh, that particular group that uh, we thought died, but of course uh, it could be very much around here. Um, I had a friend uh, who uh, with, with whom we're living in Johannesburg. And, uh, and uh, he came to Kenya. His entire family had been wiped out. Nine people. Mm. Father, mother, uncles, and, and, and so on had been wiped, 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 wiped out. There was absolutely nobody. This fellow came and buried the family members. He's never come back to Kenya to date. These are, these are some of the personal pains that people went through because of this uh, nonsense of uh, organizing militias. Um, yes, and, 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 and it comes, it is coming from politicians who know better, and it's coming from people who actually have the mechanisms and the spaces. Because if you're on the government side, surely, um, you are running the country, um, indirectly, of course, uh, uh, even if you sit in parliament, uh, you are making the laws, you have the entire machinery, the police and all these uh, uh, other groupings and so on. And yes, of course, I mean, uh, if you're coming from the opposition side, yes, uh, you've, got, you've got a right to, pick, to pick it and, uh, and so on. But, but on, the, on the other hand, you know, I mean, if, 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 if the intention generally is to, is to, is to mobilize so that, uh, you know, some akin interest, you know, is met, then that actually becomes very sad because uh, um, uh, one, of the, one of the things that was being said was that, fine, I mean, it doesn't matter whether these people have an agenda or not. The poor person on the, on the street, uh, will give, they also have an agenda. They also do have an agenda of their own. So as a leader, you must actually have an agenda to control um, the narrative of what's happening outside there. Otherwise, we start seeing the sort of disturbing images that we're actually seeing today, you know, of people vandalizing a property and so on. And, and where does it stop? Um, you know, if, 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 I, if I mobilize people, pay them, and then they're able to come and loot your place, uh, what about tomorrow? when your place is already destroyed and they don't have any other you know, means of income. They'll, they'll eventually mm. uh, go and uh, loot commissioners and, 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 uh, and come to Wanjiru's place, and then they'll, they'll eventually come, come to me. Yeah, so, so I think the leaders need to tone down the rhetoric. There's nothing to be gained uh, through this nonsense apart from just uh, you know, egotistic uh, uh, things with, right, right from, the, from, 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 from the top. What, what, what do you benefit by vanquishing somebody politically? <laughs> I mean, you, you, elections are already gone, the elections in 2027. Why do you want to destroy everything that these people actually have? And I think uh, the message to government is also give the position a bit of breathing space. Uh, you know, I mean, so that they can, so that they can do their things. Uh, right. Otherwise, you end up in, with this desperation. All right. And as I listen to both th these two guests, Danvers, I then wonder, tonight, is the, can the NCIC really sleep? Their job is to map out these hotspots, provide interventions. And Kenyans would ask this evening, what are you going to do? You know, what we are hearing is, 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 is very worrying. Of course, the efforts behind the scenes to, to, to try to bring sobriety and, and discussions and, 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 and some logical discussions to, to, to this. Um, whether that will prevail, we'll yet to say. Um, because right now, of course, everybody's charged, everybody's angry. Um, and, and, and emotions are prevailing. Uh, rather than, 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 than calm and, and sobriety. Um, ours, of course, is to activate. We have mechanisms, with, of course, within the ground and, and, and that can be able to um, put the fire off, so to speak, and, and give um, other security operators enough time to respond. But it really escalates because from where we come from, the first thing is to de-escalate. Um, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever happens, you need to de-escalate because mm -hmm. if you don't, it, 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 it's so easy to escalate right now. So you, we, we talk to community leaders, uh, the peace groups, elders in the community, youth groups right now. 
uh, to the dry discalate. Now, whether, whether sanity will prevail, we we yet to see. Now, um, having said that, the, the, the cost for our country is extremely high, Wahiga. Um, you, you see, just put it in perspective, and, and that's why it's really imp imperative that we, 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 we actually call ourselves back. Last week on Tuesday, after the Monday demonstration, while th those who could have been happy what happened on Monday, uh, eight point something billion of net capital left the country from Nairobi Stock Exchange. All of last week, we've lost nine point something billion. That's correct. Okay? Yeah. Um, so add to the fact that that day, uh, there, was a, there was a loss to the economy, video about three billion. So that's 10 billion just gone right there. From a revenue perspective, I used to be the CC Financial Nairobi, okay, and you had Governor Sakaja complaining about it. March is the highest time you collect the most revenue because mm -hmm. of land rates. We, we collect, you're supposed to collect an average of 100 million in March just to make up for the other months. So when you collect that million in March when it's supposed to be 100 plus million, you got serious problems. Carry the same problem. Um, so the co direct cost is unbearable. Today, uh, we, apart from monitoring what's happening, we're also monitoring the international media because that's what we do. Now, if you look at the headlines coming from the industry media, and I am an investor coming from Dubai or Hong Kong or the US, believe me, the optics are, are, are not good at all. I'm not encouraged, it doesn't look, look good. So we're even losing uh, the further direct investment could have come as a country. At the end of the day, Wahiga, it's a lose-lose, uh. okay? From even as mere perspective, they, they are losing uh, because if you are advocating for the, the cost of uh, living to, uh, come, down. to come down, mm -hmm. I can tell you the dollar is going to go up tomorrow right. because flight is good, the capital flight is going to go up. Uh, almost 58 percent of Arabians are, are daily edge winners. So if you don't go to work today, I can buy the unga to begin with. Mm -hmm. So the costs are just you know going 300 mm percent. -hmm. Forget about what is up right now. So you're losing that battle. The government also is losing in terms of revenue, in terms of ADA. Nobody's winning this, okay? And, and it's getting worse. So there's no winning. Nobody's going to win. And then people need to understand, leaders need to understand, nobody's going to win out of this. And that's why it's, it's very important for all our leaders from both sides and, and, and moderates to really prevail so that we can pull our country back because there's no win-win. No this is a lose-lose all around. When you, when you know, off what, what I'm hearing here is a call for de-escalation. Uh, and that de-escalation needs to happen between now and Thursday because, you know, one worries that a repeat of what we saw today could also be seen on Thursday as well. What do you feel are the options for Kenya Kwanzaa uh, in terms of what you'd hope to see in that de-escalation, especially with the utterances of some of their leaders? And what do you hope to see on the Azimio side with some of the comments you're hearing from some of their leaders that would lead to de-escalation? Well, you know, uh, President Ruto... Uh, said, I think, um, this was after the IBC announcement and the days subsequent to that, that there will be no politics of retribution. And he said this severally. He went on a charm offensive, he, reaching out to various uh, constituencies and seemed to be building up a politics of inclusion. But that only lasted for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then we began to see another face of, of the administration. Now, the actions taken against um, the, fast fam uh, the former fast family um, interests, you know, some of them were you know, this dealing with state capture was reversing some of the abuses that had taken place. Um, but the point is, whatever actions are taken, they need to be informed by due process. Because if you have a sense in which um, the, the state is settling scores outside of due process, then nobody is safe. So the first thing is we need to have due process. We need to ensure, you know, when we saw what happened with Matiangi, the, this kind of merry-go-round that happened, that is very disturbing. Because you're saying, how do you attack a, pro, a former powerful CS, you know, and, and then the story is not quite clear. What is the state playing at? Similar to the attacks on Northlands and, and Spectre. So, I'll go back to the, the posture and language of the president and of the state and state officials is, sets the tone, mm -hmm. sets the tone. And this, this is what happened. We say that uh, verbal violence begets physical violence. So you cannot be saying one thing and acting in a different way and expect that, that the country will not ban. The cues are being picked. So one, language matters. Um, so I would say that there are issues that have been put on the table. Um, 
I do not understand why we had, ha, don't have dialogue around the economy in the first place. Right. Mm -hmm. We are in an economic crisis. We've been, in, we've been talking about this fiscal consolidation program. We are out of options. Mm. We've got structural problems. These two manifestos looked very similar. Why didn't they come around and say by, in a bipartisan manner, let's discuss the removal of the subsidies. Let's look at the options. Because neither side has given options to the removal of subsidies. The subsidies were removed. Taxes have been increased. We are seeing uh, irresponsible expenditure taking place. We we are not seeing dialogue on economy. Around the, IB, uh, the elections and the IBC, because one of the key things is the, um, the process of the, recruitment, the process of, recruitment of the yes, commissioners. Right. Mm -hmm. If that goes awry, then that process is locked. It means that there is no way of having fair decisions coming out of, of the IBC. Okay. We've seen the kind of appointments that have taken place institutionalizing politics. And we've had very partisan appointments. We've had withdrawal of corruption cases. You see, all this lends to the weakening of institutions. Now, these institutions are part of the safeguards of Kenya's democracy and also of peace and stability. So that's the problem. What needs to happen? The president needs to change tact overnight, needs to come out, reach out to Raila and say, can we, statesperson to statesperson, issue a statement to the country to de-escalate and to say we will talk and we will discuss things. Because we, after thousands had died in 2007, 2008, it was still back to the table between Raila and Mwai Kibaki. After things really escalated, even in 2017, we had an escalation. And that led to a handshake. Now, why wait for the inevitable to happen rather than preempt it and say, let us discuss, because I think there's consensus around, or at least there can be, um, there can be structured dialogue mm. around all these issues. And there is a national imperative for discussion around the IEBC and the electoral system, which is not serving us. So we need leadership, we and need leadership. we pray we will have it. OK. Prof, before you jump in, let's take a short break. When we come back, I'll give him a chance to give his points. He's been scribbling notes. I know he's got a lot. He wants to tell us his take on the state of the nation this evening. Rather worrying after everything that's been seen today. But our guests certainly hope that there will be sense that will prevail in the days to come and de-escalation on that same note. Let's take a short break. You're watching the Monday Report. Stay with us. We'll be right back.